Hello, hello, good afternoon. It is so nice to see you guys. I see that we've got a few people on. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Daisy Doodle. She's never here to come in when I come into the gate. <laughs> she always shows up later. Um, so I hope you guys are doing well. <clears throat> um, <laughs> Spike hears that the stream has started. <laughs> Um, I guess having his own stream with the kitty cats isn't enough. Um, so I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, doggies are doing really well. It's been a good day. Um, uh, I also wanted to mention real quickly that um, for Amber and Shelly, um, first of all, for Shelly, um, I was looking through text messages to confirm your address for shipping your, your giveaway item. And your giveaway prize. And um, I saw in our text that the link I sent you was not delivered for your um, your T-shirt. And so, it, like, I could not. I'm so sorry. I so I have this issue with my phone where if I'm just texting an, a non iPhone user, the message won't send. But if I attach an iPhone user like Drew, um, the message will send. And so I resent that. I hope you get it. I am so sorry. I thought you had it this whole time. Um, let me talk to Spike real quick. Hush. Um, and so I sent you the new link. Um, I attached Drew so that it would go through. Um, and then the other thing is that uh, Drew took um, your guys' giveaway prizes to the post office. And so I should have tracking for you um, later this afternoon when you get some with receipts. So we're really excited to finally get you guys your giveaways. Um, uh, but anywho, in other news, we've got, we've got like all our moms going into heat. Um, Robin popped into the Four Seasons room when, um, I was out there with the kitties and Spike went and went right over to her and his nose went right to her rear end. And so I checked her and she's not like, she's not like super in heat, but it looks, you know, the dogs, they have great noses, of course. Um, and so I imagine that she's going to be going into heat soon. He could probably smell the, um, you know, the change because everything, you know, it's a cycle. It, it, doesn't just turn on and off, it ebbs and flows. And so I imagine he can smell some of those changes taking place. Um, and so Robin is getting a little um, flirtatious. Um, a Daisy too, she's getting really flirtatious and she's got all this like baby fur growing in. Um, they get that when they go into heat, um, not every time, but sometimes, especially if they don't have a lot of fur, it's more noticeable. <clears throat> I did see a comment. Somebody was asking if we shaved our dogs because um, I know that there are some Cavalier families who who don't like having all the fur, so they they shave their dogs down. And so I did want to mention um, that we don't shave our dogs down. We actually really like their fur. Um, it's just that a lot of our moms recently had puppies, and so we do shave their bellies um, when they're about to nurse puppies. And so it does take time to grow back. Um, and then the other thing is that. As moms, for some reason, it's like three weeks after they deliver, they lose all their fur. Um, out, it comes these like beautiful tails that they have. Does anybody have a tail left? Um, Vienna doesn't have her tail yet. Oh, Paris has a tail, but she's sleeping. Um, they like shed all the fur in their tail. And uh, the first time I thought that I had accidentally like shaved too much because um, I went down the tail a little bit. And, um, but no, it just, it comes out. Um, and you know, when I was pregnant, it's funny because when I was pregnant and I think a lot of pregnant women have this, um, go on, but when I was pregnant, I stopped losing hair, you know, when you're washing your hair in the shower and it just kind of comes out a little bit, I stopped losing all my hair. And so my hair got nice, real nice and was shiny and very voluminous. And, um, the dogs, it's kind of the same thing. And then, you know, when time for delivery comes, the hair no longer stays. Pregnancy's got a burr right in her chest. 
Oh no, we've got a couple burrs. All right, you gotta get the doggy scissors and cut that out. Burrs, we don't want sticker burrs. Where are my doggy scissors? Um, I will be right back. I need to find doggy scissors. Alright, I can't find my doggy scissors, so I'm going to use my little Swiss Army knife since it's just got a little, little scissors that don't hurt. At least she's very precise. No, this is not a dog treat! It's a knife! It's a, it's a pocket knife! It's not a dog treat! Not a dog treat! <laughs> Macchiato, it's not a dog treat! Come here, Missy! Come here, sweetie. Come here. Come here. I want to get these sticker bars off here before they start crying. Hey, Macchiato. Oh, goodness, Missy. What did you get into? All right. Um. I always want to get the sticker burrs out right away because they will ball up and mat their fur really bad. And if we don't get them out right away, they will get like you can see it kind of getting real stuck real close. I don't want to do this any more than you do. I always hate having to cut stuff out of their fur. Oh, so great of you know cutting them. Um, but also I wanted to say um, and give another big welcome to all of um, our newer viewers. Um, we, we thank you guys for your support and your, your time. Um, I know that we, you know, we don't have a very fast moving channel. It's not, um, excuse me, Boca. Um, and that's one reason I want to get some other videos up that kind of answer some questions. Mocha, get back. You're making this difficult. You're keeping Missy calm. Thank you. Um, all right, I want to focus. So I hurt her. Huh. But um, just wanted to say thank you that, um, you know, we've noticed you guys. We need your nails. We have um, noticed the um, increase in your users. And um, we've seen a few of you pop up in chat. And so, um, it's really great to see you guys, um, to kind of see, put a, put a username to something, put a username to the viewer numbers. Um, but it really is nice getting to know those of you who watch, because, you know, if we did, if we did only videos and not a live stream, it would take away the interactive piece. And part of what we love about our channel is um, the community that's grown and being able to get to know you guys and your dogs and, you know, except everybody has Cavaliers and there's, um, 
I have a soft spot in my heart for spaniels as a whole. Um, but, oh, and that gives me an opportunity to plug channel memberships because those of you who, um, we do have a lot of members who, or a lot of subscribers who often ask about sharing photos. And so if that's something that you wanna do um, or be able to do, um, we have that available for our channel members. Um, the link is in the description. Um, for every single tier, for the lowest tier, um, we have um, a members side of our website where you can log on and it's sort of like a social media interface where you can follow each other. Um, you have a profile, you can post pictures, videos, photos, um, and then there's a forum, a corresponding forum where everybody can post in and kind of hang out. And then um, there's also chat rooms where you can um, customize them to be with one other person, three other people, but they're private. Um, and then there's another forum where um, you post in there just with you know the other members and then it's just publicly viewable. And so for any viewers on our channel, for instance, if they're not channel members, you can say, hey, I posted a picture of my RBC puppy who's a year old now, if you want to check it out on, on their um, public forum. And those links are in our um, the description. And so if you want to check out the public forum and just see what's on there, um, you can um, click on that link. It is, it's below like the intro, um, but after like I list the dogs, it's, it's down there. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, so um, it's just me here today, right now. Um, we've got Myra is our only one that is um, on break, or I'm sorry, she's the only one not on break. And um, so we've had two good meetings with her and Macchiato. Um, we've been dreaming of her litter with Macchiato for, for a year now since we got her. Um, oh, it's been a year since. Macchiato. Um, it was New Year's a year ago when Paris was spayed. And this is Paris right here. And Paris had her C-section and um, it ended with a spay just to keep everybody safe. Um, but right around when that happened, we were contacted by a breeder who was going to, she had had a litter and she was going to keep Myra um, to continue you know, to do kind of what we do, um, to have another mom. And then she had kind of life happen. And um, I believe it was a divorce. And so she decided to stop downsize. And so basically having a new mom to prep and everything just wasn't, wasn't in the cards for her family. So um, she reached out to us when Paris was spayed. Um, and because one of the things she loved about Myra was, and we kept Myra's name too. Um, but one of the things she loved about Myra was her like blackout face. Um, her, her blaze, you know, kind of disappeared as a puppy. And by the time she grew up, she um, had a, like almost an all black face, kind of like Paris, um, with the white donut nose. I call it a donut nose. Somebody asked about that. I call it a donut nose because the white around it um, with their, it, your Paris, I'm talking about you a lot, so why don't you come over here? I promise I'm not being lazy. I just, I did something to my knee and like seven months ago, I'm not even sure what, and it's been getting really bad lately. I think I did something to it when I was climbing over a pen, but it's like the inside right here. It's like whenever I have it sit, like with it scrunched up or out, like it's, oh, it hurts so bad to straighten and move. But, oh my gosh, Paris, you're so muddy and so lazy. So this is what I call the donut nose. You have sticks in your fur. She's good Lord, Paris. You need a bath. Um, this is the donut nose. I love it. Um, I call it donut nose when they've got um, like an almost solid face and then they've got the white around their noses. Um, because essentially when, when they have the solid face, their, the coloring comes down their cheeks. And so it makes the white um, around their nose kind of circular with their nose making the middle. And so I call it a donut nose. But it's not like a cavalier thing. That's just a me thing. That's just my own little 
Um, I guess that's our family's our family's word because everybody's kind of using it now. Um, but oh man, look at you! You're filthy. I can't believe me sleeping in bed with you like this. <laughs> oh man, you are dirty, 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 dirty dog, dirty dog. Um, Vienna is Paris's puppy right here. This is Vienna, and Rio is on the other side of the door over there. Um, we have to keep the boys very separated right now, especially with all these moms in heat. Um, as Missy and Myra come out of heat and these other four go into heat, I expect that the boys are going to be even more um, vocal about their desire to be with the girls. Um, and I mentioned this in the description. I do want to make this very clear. Um, uh, what we do with our dogs, you know, with all of them being, or all but Paris being um, intact, don't try this at home. If um, you're watching our channel and you've got a couple of dogs and you're like, oh, maybe I want to try that. Um, I just want to mention that, you know, this wasn't something that happened overnight. Um, I grew up um, learning how to train and rehab rescue dogs. And so like over my lifetime, I'm 37. And of those 37 years, I've got about 22 that um, were focused on dogs. Um, and 22 is skipping some of those adult years where like I had babies and stuff like that. Um, Cause we started doing dogs when I was about eight, um, rescue dogs. And so I learned how to assess rescue dogs and um, how to rehabilitate them, build confidence, how to manage um, really dominant dogs, how to manage really submissive dogs. Um, and when you have several intact dogs, especially males and females, it can be very, very dangerous um, because when you're either choosing to mate them or not choosing to mate them, it's usually, it's very rarely going with their instincts um, because in the wild, the alpha male mates the alpha female and that's that. Um, there is no like, there is no submissive female mating with submissive males. And so that's partly why we've got this drama with the dogs right now. That's why Spike is separated because all would be well and happy and copacetic if, um, if it was Spike and, um, actually if it was Spike and Missy mating. Um, it would be better if it was um, Spike and Myra. Like, Spike wouldn't be having these issues with Macchiato. Um, but we're we're working on kind of, like, retiring Spike. And so he's kind of getting woven out of the family tree. And so um, we'll ultimately neuter him and rehome him. But we just were um, bringing Rio on board. And he's our next Blenheim stud. And so we just want to make sure that... Um, you know, his health clearances all are okay. And, um, you know, before we neuter Spike, but, um, Drew and I have, um, between the both of us, we have a lot of experience with, um, traumatized dogs that have been through a lot of mistreatment and, um, and similarly also then, you know, assessing that and, um, rehabbing them. And, it takes a lot of patience. There's a lot that you guys don't see. And um, it can be very dangerous when, when two stud dogs are vying for a female. There's no amount of training that is going to get in the way and um, help blunt any natural instincts that come to them. They are going to duke it out. Um, and even this morning, so here's a good example of, um, Drew and I, we, we, to manage a pack of 12 dogs where 11 of them are intact, um, we have to maintain our alpha status over them. And it's normal for me to be in the dog's minds, for me to be beneath Drew because we can't be equals in their world. We cannot be equals. Um, but I'm still alpha over the dogs. And, um, and let me talk to Spike again with the water bottle.
stop. So this morning we heard some ruckus and I was getting ready and Drew came in here and he saw that Spike had managed to unlock and open the door. And um, he came, he, so he saw Spike like kind of jump the, the gate and Myra was right there and he just mounted her and was like, you know, hugging her and was starting to go at it. And I heard it Drew, Spike, no. And he said that my, uh, Spike just kind of looked up at him and just like let go and just crawled off and walked just like he slinked was the word. He slinked away, he slinked back to the Four Seasons room. And um, that's not a... So we want to avoid that situation at all costs. That's why we're um, like counting the days until we can neuter him. But um, that respect that Spike has for Drew, um, that's where it is crucial because, um, you know, if he didn't have that level of respect for him as an alpha, he would kind of give him the middle finger and do what he's going to do with Myra. And so it, it speaks volumes when the dog is, because it's not training. It's not from training that he's listening to the no. What he's listening to is the alpha telling him he can't do what he's about to do. And if the alpha, who's alpha to Spike, if the alpha is telling him no, um, he will listen to that because, you know, again, in his mind, in the dog world, if he challenges Drew, who is much more alpha than him, um, there's going to be consequences. Now, you know, we don't, there's not actually consequences, like the dogs are, think they're gonna be consequences, but they don't know that. They don't know that we're not gonna have a big fight with them. Um, but he does know that Drew will see that as a, as a huge challenge and form of disrespect. And so um, it's, uh, Mocha, Mocha, what are you doing? Um, it's, that's why I wanted to put in the, start putting in the description to, you know, is we like to laugh and <clears throat> make jokes about the dogs and going on dates and stuff, but it is very serious. It shouldn't be taking, um, shouldn't be taken as lighthearted as we, um, sometimes portray that it is because it can be, um, you know, dogs who are unfixed, um, they, they are hormonal. <laughs> they, they are literally hormonal and, um, they, they have instincts that training just can't, um, stop. And so, um, oh, but my point about Spike backing down when he was mounting Myra, um, is that if we didn't have that, um, if Spike did not respect us like that, we wouldn't be able to do this at all. Because, um, you know, that's only one example of how it kind of illustrates how much he values what Drew says as an alpha. Um, but it plays out everywhere else in the house. You know, when we're out with the cats and giving instructions out there, Spike is going to take much more seriously what we say than if, um, than if he were, like, say, a more dominant dog that was frequently challenging us. It would be really difficult to to do breeding with um, a pack of unfixed dogs if our if either our stud or our mom was our alphas were really dominant, um, just because we have to be able to maintain order, and um, that's why I wanted to put a little disclaimer to not try this at home because um, our dogs, you know, it's all worked out very nicely. We've been very lucky. Um, and, you know, and I'm sure some of it has to do with some of the things, you know, we've been able to catch things before they'd go sideways. Um, but um, it can't be overstated that how much, um, how different unfixed dogs behave compared to fixed dogs, if that makes sense. Um, because you're like removing a giant puzzle piece to their personality, maybe not to their personality, but just like to their, um, emotions maybe um and they react differently um to, to different situations an unfixed dog is going to react way differently to what happened with my run spike this morning than than how my run spike acted um 
And if it had been me who walked in, if I yelled at Spike, no, I don't think he would have stopped. Um, but I think he would have like looked up and it would have been like a partial stop where he would have looked up and been like, oh, should I keep, should I, should I listen? <laughs> Am I going to have to pay the, pay the, the, um, do the time with dad? Um, and because I mean, when Drew's not here, they will do little things to kind of challenge me. And so, um, that's why I like to have, I like to have Drew as my <laughs> backup. Um, if anything ever happens, I always call for him because I know that Ricky really is like the ultimate say so in, in the dog's heads. And, um, you know, they, you know, they can't see us as peers being Drew together. And so um, we have to accommodate that. We have to keep that in mind that they aren't able to see us as peers, see us as equals. And so it's just something that Drew and I need to keep in mind when I'm out there with the dogs and, you know, we've got somebody in heat and we've got studs and we've got, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. We've got cats in heat now. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all going really well. Um, but you guys can't really see kind of like how that all that came to be, I guess is what I'm saying. And so when we turn on the live stream and everything's going nicely and you haven't seen um, all that it took to kind of get to that spot. Um, I just like to, I wanted to remind everybody that um, they're not fixed to dogs. They're not, um, you know, there is a bit of a different personality that they have. Um, I think they're a lot more uh, opinionated when they're not fixed. They seem to have a lot more uh, conviction in what they think and feel. So, um, but this morning was just kind of a reminder of seeing Spike, his reaction to Drew. I was really impressed because, um, you know, ordinarily, if you have a dog in heat and a male dog together, there's nothing you can do to stop them, especially when you're as fertile as she is. Um, and so the fact that Spike just dismounted Myra when Drew came out and didn't just Spike, no, um, was really incredible to me. Um, I am so thankful because um, we're having a Myron Macchiato litter. We don't want to, we don't want to split dads, but, um, and you know, it's kind of, maybe, I don't know, Spike, I don't know if he would know that Macchiato even made it with Myra because he hasn't been around Myra. He hasn't been able to like sniff her and tell that it's her, it's what Macchiato's made it with and not Missy, because he knows that both Missy and Myra are, heat, are in heat. And so I think that's part of the issue right now with um, with their bickering, Spike and Macchiato's, because Spike probably thinks Macchiato could be dating with Missy. And Missy is Spike's lady, so <laughs> um, he doesn't care for, for anybody else to meet with her. Missy, we gotta trim your toenails. They got long. Hi, sweetie. You're a good girl. Um, and we did some rearranging in our room. And so I imagine we're going to have, with how our litters timed out last fall, I imagine this summer our litters are going to have like three or four litters at a time, um, or at least overlapping. Um, and so we rearranged our bedroom a little bit. And so we've got like a new puppy pool spot on my side of the bed. And so we've got a spot there. We've got a spot in front of the fireplace and then a spot over by the bathroom. And then we've got a spot in the closet. So we've got lots of room, um, but my right here, we're looking at um, March 15th, 16th, um, and it'll probably have to be a little bit later than that because she's still fertile, so it um, might be more like March 17th, but um, If her puppies come around March 17th or March 15th even, they would be, if you're interested in the Myra or Macchiato uh, puppy, um, the, those puppies will be ready to go home in about mid-May. So actually that's perfect timing. That is right at the end of the school year so your kids can help with potty training and all that good stuff. So if you have a family, if you have children, or if you are looking for an ESA, um, I'm still working on my message. I have a family in particular, or there's a couple families, but one in particular, I want to answer your questions um, very fully. 
And so if you messaged me and you were telling me about your daughter and her anxiety, um, and you had been trying to reach the other number and now you're trying to number, I'm working on a message to you. Um, I, I started it a couple of days ago, but um, was busy trying to set up the stream and um, didn't want the stream to wait an hour while I was being picky about which words I chose. And I just like to make sure my, the words I use are the words I want. Um, um, because this person was asking, you know, kind of a, how is an ESA different from a family dog? And so I wanted to explain, you know, how even our ESA dogs for our kids have been so much more than an ESA dog because um, as a kid, you have that whole responsibility. And um, even Bella, Vienna pooped. Um, she was downstairs in the basement and Vienna pooped um, in one of like the corners. And she came running up here to tell me that Vienna went poop. And she was like, but I cleaned it up. It's my dog's poop. And I was so proud of her um, because she really, and May and Bradley, like through the course of, you know, their puppies are young. Vienna was born here. <clears throat> and um, as they are training them, you know, for one, they can see the fruits of their labor, you know, all those frustrating times where the dogs aren't listening. And it all finally starts coming together over the months. And it just builds so much confidence and self-esteem. And it's because it is that that self-esteem that is built like from deeply from within. It is a very good foundational self-esteem. And like I know with Paris, where are you, Paris? Over here. Um, Paris was absolutely life-changing for our almost 14-year-old. Um, because she was able to see the impact she had on another being. And, you know, some of the issues with school, with friends, you know, I remember when I was growing up in middle school, you know, there's a, like a phase you go through where I felt kind of invisible. Like if I walked out of this room, nobody would even notice that I left. And getting Paris for May, it basically kind of, it pulled her out of that mindset and it helped her learn that, She's not invisible because Paris always saw her. And, um, you know, if they're not together and May starts getting distressed about something, it, maybe she'd rather get into an argument or she could even be texting a friend and there's an argument between her and a friend. Um, Paris will just come out of nowhere. She can hear it in her voice. She can hear it in the way she walks. <clears throat> um, on days when she's had a bad day at school and she's coming home, Paris goes running to the door. And if she hasn't had a bad day, Paris will just kind of hang out and wait for her. Um, but if she's had a bad day, Paris will come to the gate and she'll bark and whine to go see me. Um, and so, you know, Paris is not only there to comfort her, but Paris is also showing her all of the thing, all of the positive impact that May can have on Paris's life. And May sees how happy Paris is and what a good dog she is. And so, oh, oh I'm sorry, I don't mean to spook you. I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. It really helps build that self-esteem from inside. And that's what's so important for kids, especially, and I mean, for building any self-esteem, but to build that confidence. Um, it has been very eye-opening because I never, even when we, um, began raising the dogs as ESAs, you know, I recognize, you know, they were therapeutic animals and I kind of akened them to, um, or likened them to um, a therapy dog. Um, but that's the thing is they are a lot more than a therapy dog because a therapy dog goes to different people and they're not focused on one individual person. They're kind of more generic, and so they just have a generic, you know, therapeutic benefit to them where they're just calm and friendly, and they've got real docile nature. Um, and then an ESA dog is kind of is still therapeutic, but is opposite in the sense that where um, a therapy dog is trained to be, be more broad, an ESA dog is trained to be more specific. 
And so a therapy dog is going to be, you know, for, you know, their ticket to nursing homes and hospitals. Um, and an ESA dog is going to get to know their person. It's going to get to know their struggles, their needs, and the impact it has on the person that they're there for is just absolutely incredible. Um, because it's so much more than just a coping mechanism or when May has an anxiety attack. Because then there's, you know, May used to say, I wish Paris would follow me around like Daisy follows you around. Well, guess what happens now? I, I said to May, well, this is what you need to do. And all I told her, in case anybody's wondering, is whenever you go anywhere, just call her name, make sure she comes with you, and then continue where you're going. So if I, like, get up and walk out of the kitchen and go to my bedroom, I'll just make sure Daisy follows me. And Mocha started doing the same thing with Drew. <clears throat> and May started doing that with Paris. And now guess who follows her everywhere? And so those little things will happen. And when May notices, <clears throat> or I think that one I had to point out to her, is um, Paris wouldn't climb up the stairs for the longest time. And May was so frustrated because she would have to pick her up and pull her up the stairs. And um, when she started this, you know, you know, Paris follow me thing, um, Paris began climbing the stairs on her own. And, and so it's kind of like an unintended consequence that was really beneficial to May because she felt so proud of that because what she had done fixed another issue she was having with Paris and it was all her. That wasn't even me. That was her. Um, and so then when she goes to school, she is exuding this confidence that she feels because it's coming from within. She, you know, nobody at school is going to be able to take that from her. Nobody's going to be able to say, you know, you didn't do that with your dog and be able to take that confidence because she knows better, you know, whereas in other situations, somebody might be able to say, oh, your basketball game, it wasn't that good. Or, you know, um, uh, I got more free throws than you did. You know, there's, there's different ways that kids can take confidence and self-esteem from each other. And um, Paris, um, May's ESA dog, is, is just... It's just interesting because it's so unique that um, Daisy, dog, she's up on the dining room table. Get down from here. I was going to spin the camera around so you guys could see, but she jumped out as soon as she saw me. Um, but yeah, there's um, so many. This is why the family that I'm getting back to, I just wanted to make sure I answered your question very fully because um, there is a difference between just like a really good family dog that is sharing their time with the family and ESA dog that is for one person. Um, and even like a therapy dog. Um, but a dog, if you have a puppy that has been raised to be a therapy dog, you can train them to be an ESA dog just as easily as one of our dogs because, I mean, it's kind of just how we raise them. We raise them to... Um, we really we focus on those traits that make Cavaliers great, like the affection, um, that loving, um, um, you know, as, so as puppies, as young puppies, like their eyes are so closed. They don't quite know, you know, they don't know yet anything about life. And so we kind of, you know, as soon as appropriate, we'll start snuggling them and holding them. And we'll start um, nurturing those characteristics that we know are in there that might not be out yet. And so then as they start coming out, as they're starting to look for human attention and interaction, we're already there. And so it really helps to those traits. It really helps kind of dig them out and um, really optimize them. And um, there's some of the, some of the puppies that we have, sent home to some families have been absolutely life-changing for, for these folks. And, um, and that's why I won't ever let trolls get on my nerves. They just get the block hammer, fan hammer, um, because, um, you know, this is where the adoptive shop doesn't apply because, um, you know, at least I know in our situation, you know, we had a child who 
was completely paralyzed to go out the front door. And getting an ESA dog was was life changing. And like that is not that is not an overstatement at all. It changed her life because she was um, she paralyzed is the best word. She was so frozen with anxiety that she just couldn't leave. And it, it wasn't just an overnight thing. It was it took time. Go once it got to that point where it was affecting all day, every day of her life something had to change and you know going to a therapist once a week just isn't gonna it's not going to stop that downward cycle you know it's like watching a, a toilet flush down it just keeps going 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 down and you've got to stop it and you know change course to go reverse and that's the tricky part is you know finding a club or a sport it just wasn't going to do it because having anxiety that paralyzes you is not going to, it's not, it's not going to go away just because you, you have a support you that you like, you know? Um, and that's where the ESA dog just was, we had a therapist recommend it and I wish we'd had, we'd heard of it before. We didn't even know there was such a thing. Um, and, uh, the, the idea we were planning to have Paris, um, certified as a psychiatric service dog by now, that is one thing that we really, really recommend. Um, because over the years, ESAs, um, or I should say that the, the exceptions for ESAs have been abused, um, by folks who want to bring their favorite childhood dog away to the dorms. Um, you know, they don't want to say goodbye to them for college. And so, you know, they loophole, the loopholes for an ESA dog would be used by people who didn't really have an ESA or a need for an ESA. They just wanted to bring your dog, um, to, you know, whatever it is, vacation or get free pet, you know, pet tickets. Um, and, and so our, our big recommendation is that if you get an ESA dog and your, your dog's an active part of your life where, um, you know, I have Daisy and, she doesn't need to be a psychiatric service dog because, you know, we live out in the country and I can take her with me to the school and I need to pick up kids. I can bring her with and everybody likes to pet her and she's well behaved. Um, but if we lived more in suburbia, um, we would get the psychiatric service um, dog certification because um, unlike ESAs, a psychiatric service dog is going to have the full protections that every other service dog has. And so you can take them anywhere. You can do, you know, anything that you can do with a CNI dog, with your psychiatric service dog. Um, but with an ESA, you can't. The 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 um, things about the ESA is that ESAs, um, the airline thing has changed. It was that ESAs could travel on your lap, um, but that one's being abused heavily, um, which is unfortunate because. Flying is a huge um, anxiety issue for a lot of people. And so it's a big shame that those who have ESAs can't now pull them out when they need them. Um, but it's one of those things that I think has changed where you can't, um, you can no longer pull them out on your lap. You can only have them in their, in their soft carrier in front of you. Um, but I do think that, that the fee is waived because they're not technically a pet an ESA and so I think you don't have to pay the pet fee um, um for hotels it's a similar well so for hotels you are so here's legally so they are protected under the fair housing act and under the fair housing act you have um like rental properties and um hotels and so with hotels um the issue is that um you can't um I'm sorry you any hotel that says they don't allow dogs, they have to allow your ESA. Um, and if they charge a pet fee, they have to waive it. You are not required to pay the pet fee. Um, however, the problem we've run into is that might be the law. But when we're traveling, you know, we drive eight hours, we get to our destination, we go to check into the hotel. And this isn't a psychiatric service dog. ESAs are just pets. And we end up arguing with the the um front desk about it you talk to a manager and you know it's it 
based on how they're based on their understanding of it, it sounds like they're all just kind of like repeating what they've been told. And when we try to explain, you know, what it all means, they just kind of repeat the same thing. And so I think it's just a lot of misunderstanding. And there was a lot of abuse of the ESA exceptions that have been given. And so I think a lot of, you know, hotel chains kind of started clamping down and um, because they're not full service dogs, there aren't these like black and white laws that, you know, kind of like with HIPAA, you know, service dogs, you know, there are these laws with HIPAA, there's laws with service dogs where it's just like, you know, it's a no-no to ask somebody with a service dog what their disability is. Um, but with ESAs, because there's so much more gray area um, and Unfortunately, so many people have abused those exceptions um, that I think it's almost kind of made a mockery out of like genuine ESAs and those of us who are trying to take our dogs on trips. Um, because the whole purpose of the Fair Housing Act, um, the, the sub paragraphs about the ESAs, the whole purpose is not the the law is to is designed to prevent. ESA dog being separated from ESA handler. And so that's why it's in the Fair Housing Act for um, hotels and rental properties. Um, oh, I didn't mention rental properties. Rental properties, um, similar to hotels, if they do not allow dogs, they have to allow your ESA or any pets, they have to allow your ESA. And then the other thing is they can ask for a deposit, but they cannot ask for a, a monthly, in, like a monthly rent for your pet. Like now, I know some, um, landlords will say, you know, oh, if your rent is $800 a month, if you have a pet, it's going to be $900 a month. So if you have an ESA, you've got your letter from your psychiatrist. Um, and it has to be from a psychiatrist or, um, another mental health professional. It cannot be any mental health professional. It has to be a psychiatrist or, um, um, one of the therapy, I think it's, I think it's gotta be an LCSW or an LCPC. Um, needs to write that letter for you. And so some therapists can write it. Not all therapists can. Um, um, but I think all psychiatrists can, can sign off on it. And I believe nurse practitioners um, can also sign off on it. They just have to have the, the psych credentials. Um, but if you have that letter, when you go to sign a lease for an apartment, they cannot turn your dog away. Um, and I would just make sure to get that in your lease that your dog is an ESA. You did present proof. Um, and that, you know, XYZ is being waived because of, um, because of the ESA status. Um, but they can't, they can't charge you extra because again, the whole idea is that we are trying to prevent separation between handler and dog. And so that's why we waive or they, they're supposed to waive the fees because if money is an issue that can prevent you from having your dog. And so that's the purpose of waiving the fees for an ESA. Um, Cause again, it's, it's the laws are designed to prevent separation. And um, you know, I think that's how they were able to get it passed in the first place um, because the ESA laws are kind of like, um, ESAs are kind of treated like um, pretend service dogs. Um, it's kind of what it feels like, like we're dressing up as service dogs. But um, those are the laws around ESAs. Um, and I think there's a couple more. There's the airline. Um, the biggest things are the hotels and rental properties. Um, and then the airline is mostly travel stuff. Um, but Anyway, I know I'm on a lunch tangent. I'm sorry. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope I hope I am not boring you guys. Um, I kind of think of stuff that comes up as we get messages coming in. So I hope this helps answer some questions if any of you have them. Um, I do. We do plan on getting Paris <clears throat> certified as a <clears throat> excuse me, psychiatric service dog. Um, we have, we have a family who got a puppy from us um, last summer and they, she's an ESA dog and her, her person, her ESA person um, was going away to college in the fall and she's living in the dorms with her puppy. 
Um, I, I could not believe it. I thought because we've run into so many problems with um, managers and just basically telling us that our ESA dogs are fake. Um, that I was really, really happy to hear that they were able to get her puppy okay to, to live in the dorms with her. How awesome is that? Um, they've got their puppy in the dorm. I don't know if she has a single, maybe she's got a single dorm, dorm room. Um, I think she's got a roommate. I had to text them and find out. Um, I know how she's doing, but, um, when you have yourself surrounded by the right people and the right support, um, ESAs are incredible. Um, I remember being in a therapy session with my counselor once and we had had like some breakthrough or I had some breakthrough, something my counselor probably saw for months, you know, but I had a breakthrough and I remember saying to her, does this mean that I am going to be on medication for the rest of my life? And she said that, you know, she kind of, you know, made the comparison of mental health to diabetes and all that stuff. Um, but the answer was essentially, you know, if you want to be able to do what you want to do and live a full life, you know, there's no reason to force yourself to be so miserable with anxiety and depression. And, um, I never, I kind of just thought that treatment therapy and um, the ESA dogs do so much more, not more than therapy, I want to say that. I will say that they, um, they do more than medication, um, at least in my case, because, um, you know, therapy, you usually feel good after a therapy session you feel better like you feel at least I do I feel um I feel like I've resolved some issues and like I feel like I can tackle the next week or so you know the next couple of weeks um what's nice about ESAs is it's like they're there for you in between <laughs> and they're there when when you need them and you know they're never judging they're um you know, with our daughter who went through all kinds of, you know, stuff with friends, you know, she'd lost trust in people because she'd been betrayed so much. And having Paris, you know, having somebody to come home to every day that's going to have the same love for her every day, no matter what. And I mean, she's got that in her family, but I mean, everybody knows how that is with your mom. Like your mom's always going to tell you they love you and it's all going to be okay. And so sometimes you need, to, you need it from somebody else. You need it coming from something else. And so, um, just having that other, um, having that other avenue has been really helpful for her. Um, I think you're just trying to pick toilets. Oh my gosh, it's 42 degrees outside. Wow. That's nice. Are you going to become a mommy again? You want to be mommy? Are you going to let Daisy help you with your babies? Are you going to let Daisy nanny again? Oh, which, oh. Not toilets. Drawer knobs. Hi, Robin. You're a good girl, Myra. Yes, you are. You are a little doggy. You're such a good girl. Sorry, Myra. Why did I think so hard? Sorry, I gotta respond to Drew. Drew? It'd be nice after our long break to just go back in like with one litter and keep it quiet first. 
um, oh, I was, I was gonna start working on my video. Um, oh, I do have a video from this morning. I was telling you guys I was gonna get some more trailer videos. Um, and I got one, I got a good one, but it was so long that I had to edit it down and then I ended up taking all this time and it, like it turned into what I was trying to avoid. Um, but I'll get that done today and we'll have that for later today or tomorrow. But um, with the kids finally back in school, you know, Monday through Friday, um, it's going to be a lot easier to get some videos done. I have a goal of, um, first I want to get like my first video done, but I have a goal of getting them done, getting them done consistently. Um, but I've got a whole bunch of topics of things that we like talk about, you know, like ESAs versus psychiatric service dogs, um, things that we talk about on the streams that, um, you know, might be things that people are Googling or looking up, um, but are kind of hidden in our streams and, you know, can't be found unless you just have it playing on the background and on your TV. Um, so I'm going to work on that. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to add a little bit to it. So to make it something more than, um, more than just me talking. <laughs> um, so I wanted to do a little bit of reading up on some topics first, but they're coming. I also need Drew's help with filming and um, Drew's schedule is like, <laughs> never matches mine. <laughs> um, we both have like different tasks, you know, when we work together, we live together and we work where we live. Um, you know, we have different tasks, you know, with the dogs, with the house, with the kids. And so like, he'll be doing other things while I'm doing other things. And so it's really hard to find a time when we're both available to do something together. Um, believe it or not, but that's actually, um, it's probably why when we do live streams, you usually see me coming on Andrew's kind of like hanging in the background because he's working on his, his stuff. Um, there's just always a lot going on. Um, but Dogs are all sleepy, tired. They had a busy, busy morning outside. Um, it's a lot warmer out. It's, you, I heard it's 42 degrees outside, so um, they've been out a lot more this morning. And the kitties go outside and they go hunting. Oh, they're, they're so awesome. Spike is so sweet with them, too, because when they go outside, Spike, like, stands guard. They'll, you know, run off and or they'll go stalk something, and Spike will just kind of saunter around and he'll just be like keeping an eye out it's really sweet um and i brought robin in to see them well no robin snuck in to see them and then i went and chased after her and then i saw that she was behaving herself so i decided to let her stay for some for a few minutes and um she did really well with them and so one at a time they're doing well with the cats and you know we're we're working toward having everybody live peacefully together um and we seem to be on the right track so that's going well um we've been tossing around i don't know i don't know if we're gonna do it but we've been tossing around the idea of um creating a channel for the cats just so to to not confuse the algorithm since the algorithm understands that our channel is dogs and puppies um and so a different channel with cats might help um but also the algorithm understands that we're pets so i i don't know maybe it would be better to, i don't know but um i just don't want it to start getting messy on the channel um trying to keep track of everything but we'll see we'll see how it goes um what i would like to do is use this camera that you guys are using you were looking at through now um i would like to use that because it's going through the computer and um for one, the, the quality of the stream is usually better, and um, the screen is a lot wider, a lot wider this way, and a lot wider this way. Um, and so our idea is to move the computer over here and have the camera on the stream start, you know, in here. Um, but you'd be kind of looking toward the fridge, which I think you'd actually see more looking from over there or in that corner. Um, and then, you know, midway through the day, we'll move the camera out the door and then you can see the four seasons room with the kitties and the dogs 
So, I mean, we'll see how it goes. We've got a really long extension cord, so um, we can make that work. Um, it just kind of depends on timing and what we have going on. Amazed at how calm you guys are. You're so good. Hi, sweetie. You see, gets so friendly when she is in heat and pregnant. All this friendliness is going to go away once her heat cycle ends. If she was pregnant, though, if she got pregnant, she would. She continues being super sweet, and she gets more sweet. They all do. It's like they. I think they start feeling that sort of maternal, that love juice that they feel when they have babies. They just want to be loved. Um. Amber and Shelly, if you guys are on, I mentioned it at the very beginning of the stream, but I just want to repeat in case you guys have joined since. Um, your items are being shipped to you as we speak. Well, actually, Drew's at Menards right now, but he's taking them to the post office um, on his way home, or he may have already dropped them off. Um, but I'll send you tracking numbers when he gets home. Um, we packed them up last night, got everything addressed, and... Um, I am so sorry, Shelly, because I saw that when I sent you the link for your t-shirt, um, I did not add Drew, and I have this problem with my phone right now. It's been going on for like a year, and I don't know why, but um, my phone cannot independently deliver texts to non-iPhones. And so, um, but it does if I attach a Drew to it. It's really weird. So, but I accidentally sent the link to you um, like directly to you and so it didn't deliver. And so this morning I, oh, I need to make sure the link doesn't expire. I'll, I'll double check on it. But um, I resent the link to you um, with Drew attached. So let me know if you got it um, so that if, if you don't get it or if the link is expired, I can fix that for you. But I feel terrible because I sent it on December 23rd and only just now noticed on January 30th. So I'm really sorry um, about that. But um, it is, it's still there. It's still there for you to claim. Um, I hope you do claim it. I want you to get your t-shirt. Um, and the, every, the um, giveaways have been packed and they're waiting to be shipped um, in the car right now. So you guys should be getting them soon and we will send you tracking once, once I get my hands on it. Um, but we apologize that this has taken so long. Um, I remember thinking, like, I need to ship these, like, right away or else they're going to get, like, on a table in a corner for, like, weeks at a time. And while that wasn't really quite how it went, it still kind of ended up as the end result with the weather and the kids being home and all that stuff. So um, we're really sorry, but um, they are going to be on the way soon. So um, I'm excited for you. And Amber, I was able to pack it all up in a box. I didn't think I was going to be able to but I did have to take it all apart. Um, so it's not in its pretty presentation anymore. Um, I had to fold down the, the toy basket. All you have to do to like get the wrinkles and stuff out is fill it up essentially. Um, and what I did to do that originally was I took the snuffle mat and just kind of stuffed it inside of the basket. Um, but everything fit, all was well. So Robin is snoring. Oh gosh, kids are gonna be home from school soon. You are good doggies. Oh, Missy. Hi, sweetie. You're such a good girl. Ooh, Mocha's been waiting for this bone. Um, oh, and if you are a family who is um, interested in a puppy from us with um, with Myra having mated, we are, you know, when we don't have any puppies on the horizon, um, we don't really, we don't collect names. We're not actively taking down everybody's information. Um, we more just tell you, just kind of check back in a little bit uh, with the time frame. Um, because it's really time consuming. Um, 
And so, but now with Myra um, having babies on board, um, we'll, we will begin collecting names again, just so you guys know. Um, so if you're a family that's been following us and you've been waiting for this next letter to come up, um, uh, I don't think my phone number is on the website anymore. Um, I'll put my phone number somewhere that you guys can find it. Um, but you can just text us. Um, we just ask for like a little bit of bio, just, you know, um, like what are the members? You don't even have to give us that much private information. We're just asking for, um, um, like a little bit about your family. You know, if you're a family, you know, are you wife, husband, kids? Um, and something we're going to start doing, um, is we're going to start asking for, um, a couple of references. It's something that a lot of readers do, and it's not something we've done before because, um, you know, I felt like we didn't really, um, I don't know, I just, I don't, we just didn't really need to, I don't know. Um, but I feel like we're starting to reach um, a wide enough audience and we're, our net is casting a little bit wider. And so we're going to start asking for a couple of references. Um, and, you know, it doesn't need to be your, you know, high school biology teacher or, you know, like, I know some like employment um, applications will be asking for all these professional references and I've always had trouble coming up with all the ones they wanted. Um, but just like if you have anybody that is knows you, um, knows you in your current life state, um, meaning, you know, anybody that is, um, you know, whether it's a work colleague or a family friend or, um, probably the only references that wouldn't really work is somebody in the same house. So like if you're from the same family unit, you know, if you're a wife calling about a puppy from your family for your family and you put your husband as a reference, that won't really work. <laughs> um, but, um, I guess probably in some cases, some spouses would like that. <laughs> um, but just like family friends or work colleagues, um, a brother, a sister, um, if you have adult children, um, any of those will work. Um, it's really more just like a character reference because, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we had a lot of opportunity to get to know families ahead of time. Um, and things are moving more like faster paced now. And so it would be helpful if we had the ability and I, you know, I don't think we'll be calling every single reference, but if we can just have the ability um, to verify if we need to, um, it would help a lot um, because we, we have a lot, we have a high demand and not enough supply. And so we just want to make sure that the puppies are going um, where in the best place that they can go. So um, this is something that is one change that's going to be coming about for 2024 um, is references. We'll probably ask for two, um, but that's a new thing. So you can, um, but we just ask for a little bit of a, a little bit of bio, nothing too private, um, just what you're willing to share. Um, if you're looking for an ESA dog specifically, um, is helpful too. Um, when we have families who are looking for an ESA puppy, um, we make a point to do this like little, um, little exercises that we'll do with the puppies just kind of on a daily basis, um, at different ages that we'll do. We'll, we make sure we do it with all the puppies, but we try to make sure to do it with, um, our ESA puppies. So that's about the only change, I think. Um, pretty soon here, Drew and I are going to be doing, um, I don't know if we're going to be doing Vienna. Well, I might as well do it just so you know. But um, we're going to be doing Vienna and Rio's um, health testing. And so when we um, get the stuff to do that, we'll, we'll probably just do it on the live stream so you guys can see what that's all about and what, what all is entailed with the um, genetic testing. 
Um, Cause it's really easy to do. You, um, they'll usually just send you a kit and you um, follow the instructions and send it in. And a couple weeks later, you've got your results. But, um, you know, different companies have different panels. Um, and there's a, there's a Cavalier panel on uh, the company that we use. And so um, they test for the testable things that are commonly associated with that breed of dog. And so that's one of the things that we do to, to clear them as being suitable for, for breeding. Um, if, like if they're, if Rios comes back and he's, um, you know, got something for one of these diseases, even as it doesn't mean that he's going to have it, it just means that he's a carrier. But even if he's a carrier, we would not breed him. And so that's why that's why we haven't neutered Spike. It's why we are kind of dealing with all of that mess um, because we just want to make sure Rio is in the clear. And um, we assume that he will be, but um, just in case he's not. Um, but anyway, so I don't know what else I got. I think that's about it. I could keep talking and talking and talking. I love this bed. Patty, I cannot thank you enough. This is so nice. I've got a little backrest over here. I don't know why I wasn't using this before. This is so nice. See, I grew up and we always had foster dogs. We had rescue foster dogs. And um, because of all the training and the rehabbing and everything that we were doing with them, they all had their own individual crates. And, you know, that was very regimented. Every, they had a very specific time that they would kennel up. And, you know, that's, that's what we need to do for our um, we need structure for a dog who's had no structure and has just been left. Um, and so we give them a lot of structure. Um, and so now as an adult, I'm sitting here on this bed with dogs that we don't crate at night. And it's so weird. It's so different, so different, um, but in such a wonderful way. Um, never had like a, a pile of dogs like this before. Great. The doggies. You are all such good doggies. Yeah. It's nice having dogs that, um, you know, are born with clean slates, and you and I will often say, um, or we've often said in other streams that um, you can't you can't expect to go to a rescue and be able to find a dog, um, or I guess not expect isn't the right word, but it's kind of it feels unfair to the dog um, to go to a rescue and get a rescue dog. The, whole purpose of them having the job of healing you because rescue dogs have a lot of healing that they need to do and a lot of them have the trust with people and and so they're not in a good place to just go to their new home and start healing somebody when they have so much trauma of their own and you know being a former foster parent to foster dogs you know we did as much as we could to prepare them and you know we only send them home um when you know we clear them but it doesn't mean that they don't have lasting issues and all of that training and stuff we did we always went over with families and made sure that they continue doing it um because the biggest thing with dogs especially you know puppies is consistency they need they need structure and they need consistency and um you know, a lot of dogs, a lot of like behavioral problems. Um, if you have issues that you're one, like you just can't find the answer to, um, take a look at structure and um, consistency and just kind of do an inventory of your routine. Um, how structured is your dog's day? How consistent is it? Does, do they go to bed at the same time every day? Do they get up at the same time every day? Do they, um, you know, because they know what to expect kind of as their routine advances through the day and uh, and how to behave. Um, and so there was the kids. And um, 
they thrive when they have structure and routine. And then also maintaining your alpha status, that's also important. And that's another thing, oh, that's another video I should make about all the things that we, we do to maintain alpha status. Um, I know we have a bit of like, sorry if I'm repeating myself a lot, but I know we have a lot of new viewers too. Um, but something that we, some things that we do to just remind the dogs each day, every day that we are alpha. Um, it's a lot of simple things, but when you have all the simple things together, it speaks a lot to them. Um, but one thing is that, um, like walking upstairs, they cannot run past us. They have to stay at our shoulders or behind. And so like when I walk up the stairs, you'll see Daisy, she will leave the stairs behind me because she doesn't want to stop. And so she just leaves on the stairs behind me as I walk up. Um, but like we always walk through our ways first and then walk through. <laughs> Hey, how are you? Mom, do you know what I brought? What I'm wearing? You're wearing your Red Barn Cavaliers hoodie. No. Oh. Your shoes. Your beautiful shoes. I had to put them on yeah. when, we were, when we were playing, when we were bleeding. And you're always up. Hi there, Michelle. Hi, Carla. Can I meet the cats? Um, not right this moment. I'm wanting to How about we? Um, well, it's just me. Your dad's not here right now. Let's get a snack. Love you, mom. Love you, mom. Are you going upstairs? Yeah. All right. How's school? Yeah. Mom. 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 Elizabeth, we would love to talk to Desi for a reference. Mom, you got for the. Thank you. 
And your ice cream cone strawberries. I'm coming in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, there, wait, where is it? Right there. Oh, Jesus, that blend, blended right in. Okay, I gotta blend it, Dad. Um, not right now, sweetie. Please, no, we will check out them at some point today. I thought they're not too long ago, so. They're right now. No, oh, not right now. We don't need to right now. Mom, please. Please. Um. Spikey has been opening doors to let kids in the house. Did you know that? What? Boys, especially Mona. Mom, can I go in? Can I go with the cat? No, not right now, sweetie. Come yeah. up, come eat. I would like him to come have your snack. Snack cereal? Yeah, you can have cereal. Can I bring me in the dining room? Um, yes, that is fine. And Mom, I saw you put out. I saw you put apple juice in my lunch box. Yeah. 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 No, okay. Yeah, go on. Mom, they still light up. Come on, Piano. Mom, they still light up. Come on, Piano. Mom, they still light up. Mom, they still light up. I see that. They still light up. Um, Sally, um, how are you? I, um, if I'm not mistaken, you are one of the messages I am working on getting back to. Um, if you sent me a message, I am working on a message to you. Um, if it's not you, then it's somebody with a very similar name. Oh, look. I appreciate your patience. <laughs> oh, it's your roll up? Yep. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, you wanted you wanted cereal. You know which cereal you want? Mm -hmm. Any bubbles? Mom. Yeah. Going. 
You? You don't tell me. I tell you. No, I was asking. How was the... I wasn't telling you, I was asking. It was a question. Because I didn't speak with the question. You got your cereal? Is it the one in the green bag? No. Is it in a box? Yes. Is it in a clear box? No. Which one is it? Look. Look. Hold on. Oh, that one. That is a good one. What did you look? Yeah, I did look. Okay. Frosted Flakes. Where am I? Where are you? Yeah. You're behind the Frosted Flakes. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, can I put a cereal? Rio. Mom, can I? Mom, it's not Rio. What? No, Spike is in the first season. Come on. Can you open it? Yeah, just a second. Go get the mail. Yeah. Mom, can I pour the milk? Mm, let mommy pour the milk. Why? It's not heavy. <laughs> Maybe you do a little milk lifts. I can pour it. Um, I'll let you pour it with a little help from mommy, okay? You just let me kind of support the... I'll let you do the pouring and I'll do the preventing. It smells good. I'll do the spill stopping. The spill stopping? Stop! Stop. Okay. Good job. Okay, it's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> See, I'm good. You are good. Good job, Maury. I'll get my spoon. I think we are out of plastic spoons. Are you in good at doggies? Nope. Not out. Not out. Oh, not out. I'm good. Oh, maybe it's forks. Forks? Yeah. How do you use a fork? Huh? How do you use a fork? Don't use a fork. Use a spoon. But I like forks. But they're not for cereal, you do. What are they for? They have a much smaller um, little bowl for your spoon. Mom, this is what a fork is. I, I know what a fork is. Uh, you're so silly. I put. But I don't think you just attack them like that. Mom, there's too much forks in the area for forks. Bella, we don't have any forks. What are you talking no, about? No, forks! Oh. Forks? Forks? Okay. Why do we have forks? No, fork is um, a fork combined with a spoon. It's like part fork, part spoon, so that you have the one utensil, but you can use it as a spoon or a fork. Wait, why is there a great towel in here? I did nothing. Um, whose tablet is this? I don't remember. I'm gonna ask that. How um, do you turn on? Well, it's an old one, it's probably not even charged. But I bet dad is digging out all the various tablets and stuff we have ever since your iPad went quit. No, that, that is gone. You know. <laughs> 
Oh, careful, careful. You okay, Vienna? I think that was missing. I think that was missing. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Mom, cereal. Oh, hold on. Yeah, sorry. Alright, I'll be right there. No, we had my spoon gone. What? My spoon's gone. What? I don't think your spoon is gone. It is! Where'd it go to? I don't know. I think you do. Let's find it. You were the last person to see your spoon. I think you know where it went. Uh, can you help me? Hold on. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> Welcome, mother and son team. You guys are so funny. Jenny and Uranium. Uranium, this is how I'm going to be able to remember you now. Anu, how are you doing? Yes, Bella. I don't know, but you need to be in here with your cereal for it. Oh. You can pull my one out. Well, you need to come eat your cereal before it gets soggy. Hey, Linda. 
Sue, I'm so glad Audrey is feeling a little bit better. Yeah, but but they need to be together. Yeah. Wait, you're not doing some beginning now? No, they are. You take them out. You take them out of the package and they're individually wrapped at the same time. You know, Valentine's. I don't want to ask Dad the best way to use it. Come on out of it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Actually, I'll be done with the parachute and you can have the guy. How's that sound? The guy, I'll be done with the parachute.
Oh, I'm glad. Oh, 
was orange. That was bougie. That was joy. That was joke. Orange. Yeah, what are you getting into? You. You're turning into a wonderful girl. Yeah. I oh, right here. I saw. Hey, Bradley, if you want a snack, you might want to do that soon. That's not going to be home for a minute, though, so it's not going to be rush. Mom. Yes. Hey, baby. I'm right here. I'm right here. Oh, like, are we going upstairs? Are we going up to your room? She thinks your room is her room. Kind of like how the girls sleep in the laundry room overnight. Uh -huh. Your bedroom. Well, she knows that her room is your bedroom now. So whenever she gets to the kitchen, she's like, oh yeah, do we get to go to our bedroom? Yeah! That's what she's saying right now. She wants to go play in your bedroom. Yeah, right now. Mom, after you're done with that, are we going to go and meet the cats? Um, I actually do. It's going to be time to check on the cats. So after I am done with this, yes, I am going to check on the cats. And then I'm going to do the cats. How are you doing, Bradley? I love guys. I know you do. I'm so glad. Great to see you. We shall be back. I 
Yeah, I don't know what you're thinking. Banana! That means a penguin. Oh. Oh, oh what do you have? Banana, you are too young to be here about crotch under the crotch of underwear. Come on, Banana. Stop chewing up everybody's underwear. Come on. Let's do something a little more productive with chicken and cake cats. Yeah, that's fine. Daisy, you coming? Daisy and Vienna, let's go check on kitties. You wanna go see cats? Daisy, you wanna go see cats? You wanna see cats? Daisy. You wanna see kitties? Daisy, you're hungry for kitties, come on! Good doggies! Coming!
Good quiet. Good quiet. Good girl. Now Spike is all excited. Just be Or bye, Jenny. Have a good, have a good evening. You too, Yurinia. Thanks for stopping by. I hope we see you again soon. I'm coming.
Um, he had to go to Menards and then he was stopping at the post office. Um, She didn't go out with toast, you know, toast was eating everything. And then she went out alone. Um, so I put beauty pie out afterwards and beauty pie did not eat anything. Um, being as, uh, yeah, this was, <laughs> I grew up with all sisters. My dad was more employed now, so it would be a little bit similar, but that's how much college you love. <laughs> Specifically, the crotches of dirty underwear. <laughs> So, um, Dad's gotten used to it with all the dogs eating my underwear. No, but during math, Harris is waiting for your acknowledgement. During math. Aww. Oh, Harris. She's like, that's not enough. It's wet. That's better. That is so much better. That makes it so much better. It's pre chewed, it's pre moistened. Oh, oh, my God, that would be so. Oh. Just like feels the whole thing. Yeah, and I mean, that goes like over here. <laughs> Oh yeah, so you're like this or yeah. something. <laughs> and just go to the bathroom and because it was like ten minutes until my Oh. Um but hey, Mr. Lewis gave us a lesson. Um he gave us five minutes to get the um slope of eight lines. Um, and he was going over it, and for the first one, he, he was like, um, he started going over it, and he was like, Haley, do you know what I mean? She called me, and I refused to answer. And, and then he went, he was like, you have to go. I refused to answer, so. Can you say it? Yeah. You didn't say it. Right? It was at the meeting. And, oh, that's weird. and they have weekly meetings about uh, going over five school plans. So, um, and, uh, did you want me to say anything to him no, or anyone? No, I don't. No. I'm just going to um, take your lead on all that stuff because, you know, you've yeah. come far enough that. I feel like kind of in the beginning when you didn't need to take some charge and some lead, but um, I'm going to kind of let you let me know how it helped and I'll just assist you if you want to. Okay. Um, I got plenty of emails from in here that I can come up with. But, uh, he, um, I just refused to answer because. Because you know, first I like froze, and so I really well, yeah, couldn't. Like know. There's a whole reason and, for it. And second, because I don't, wanna, then, I don't want I don't want to make it seem like I'm okay with it. So, but you also don't want to look like you're being disobedient. Yeah. And so, yes. Yeah, and um, it's like peer pressure from the teacher. Yeah, and uh, after a while, we not. Answering, um, D'Angelo goes, uh, how did you not know? Did you not see Mr. Autumn's fingers? And um, Mr. Autumn was like, she hasn't written down. And, yeah, because... Um, well, it was his way of trying to like, for you to be able to 
Yeah, she's he just knew it. That's right. Eventually, he just wrote it down and moved on. He's a genius. why he did that and eventually I was just like if you want to just make it just make it important on one of the things. and see she just have like privacy things with students and so it's not well I mean more than you will be able to hide behind you know that just saying I can't just say and she goes I um I heard her go over there and she was like, why did she call me? Um, I I couldn't hear the rest of the wow, exchange. I'm, I'm I can't believe she um, went over and said that. I'd be scared. Oh my gosh. But I did hear, I did hear, but you can't just be doing that. Oh, dang. And, um, and she Walked, she said that? Yeah. Um, she walked past me and she, she whispered in my ear. He said he, he uh, blamed it on his brain. And I couldn't hear what you know, that word was. He was calling him out. He realizes that there's students that do know he's supposed to, like, not supposed to be doing that. Because he, the teacher probably pretty safely assumed that other students don't know the specifics of his plans. Mm-hmm. And so he has to be, like, a really close friend to know. And so probably did not expect that. It's quite possible that, you know, it's a lot of little things to remember as a teacher. But they should also be making a point to. They have a student with a 504 plan, they should be making a point to memorize everything that's relevant for their classroom. Because he's just as much your teacher as he is the teacher for the kid who's down. And and the thing is, it's not a lot to remember. It's very easy to remember. Yeah, that's why I said, like, if you ever don't know what to do, the best thing to do is nothing. Yeah. That's why I like to tell them that because 
feel like if you're ever just unsure, just don't do anything. And in that case, that would imagine don't call on her, just move on, just keep going. Don't know yeah. what to do, do nothing. Um, leave her alone. In the advisory, we took this ambiance like assessment class thing, mm -hmm. um, and it's for and the purpose of it is to help uh, help us figure out what we what we want to do. Mm -hmm. I had a total of seventy five questions. It was it was just it was quick questions. It was just like. Like I, it's like so simple. Like, I mind like to always be right. I I like to help others when they're not included, or like you know stuff like that. And um, at the end of the test, it gave us three characteristics that it chose based on it. Mine were um, organizer. Mm -hmm. uh, And it's true, but not in a super outgoing no, way. I'm super competitive, but it's not in an outgoing way. The third one was, but it was, oh, uh, future thinker. Uh, because I'm always thinking about what. It's because I'm always thinking about that. Um, and I think what they mean is when we said long term goals, like think about those yeah. long term goals once in a while. And just forward about what you're doing. And I'm always thinking about my future. Yeah. And one of the questions. Also, it doesn't mean like the future thing, it could also be in Paris. It could be the thing that, like, you know, we got her as a puppy with a goal of making her, you know. Yes, a dog and a mama dog, and so like that's also futuristic, even though it's not ten years in the future. It's still it's still mm -hmm. future goal. Back then, that was a long shot goal. Yeah. Um. But then it uh, there was a button that said like see related years, and there was a lot of finance in there, and that didn't make sense. But isn't there a lot of money? Yeah, but I don't know if that's what I want to do necessarily. It was nothing from what I wanted. Yeah, because I, I, is it finance usually like an office? It is an office. Yeah. 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 I remember my dad once like calculated out his salary and figured out like, what he lost wage when he just started to be you know hundred dollars a week when you like there was there was no like I call it nothing like that. But maybe the questions they were asking, it didn't seem like they were just that they shouldn't be selling it as like find out what you're interested in if they're not gonna cover all the different Yeah, it didn't because um, the only the only questions or mainly the, all the questions were were just like uh, about your character, not what you enjoy. And so I don't know. It's, to me it felt like there were no questions that would relate to that type of field, except for like the questions about how nice and caring you are and stuff, which relates to psychology. But, oh, oh my gosh, I remember it. I'm gonna show you.
Here is where you go. Yes. She's like, Mom's home. Can I go up to my bedroom? I love having Paris and Vienna out for the day. I didn't know you. Bring her out during the day. Yeah, ever since um, Bella basically went back to school after Christmas break, we started kind of pulling Ian out when she got home. And she was so excited. And, and, like, getting her used to yes. the different areas of the house oh and gosh. where the potty trays are. Why does this still hurt so bad? It feels like, it feels like, like just. Remember when I popped it? Mm -hmm. It it always hurts whenever I like put any pressure. Why are you staying with your mama? Maybe the maybe some of it still is in there. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's it's still red, and you can tell that it's scar tissue there. Yeah, Vienna is like the perfect dog for Bella. For, us to, for like, of all the puppies for us to pick for Bella, Vienna was it. And likewise, Paris was perfect for you. Paris? I think it's because the chair's gone. The first time she's been in here without the chair. Well, I mean, the chair's still in there. It's just, she just can't see it because it's in the, in the wardrobe. But Matthew's always sitting in it, so. If she can see or feel the spirit there, I can imagine it's intimidating that it's right there. It's around the wardrobe, so not the top of the person who sees. And then there's, well, you know what? Usually she loves the bed, but she got off the bed immediately and preferred the floor. What if it's because of Mouse's uh, urn that you moved into the middle? Hmm. Um, Miss Springer, let us do these uh, IQ tests. Um, 
one of them was like the one where it's like four images and you have to say what you see. And there was one that was like, which one is best different from the others? And then solving like cases and stuff. I don't know, it doesn't sound so much like it was like, it sounds more like one of those. What kind of scenario? I remember at my job we had a an employee Daisy. enhancement type Daisy. day, and we had this seminar where you were supposed to learn about like what kind of angry you were or something. And like, and it was funny because I remember Dad had a similar one at his work around the same time, and so we were both coming home from our jobs talking about this personality thing. But it was like weird questions at that. It was similar to. Um, an IQ test questions, but it an IQ it's more about like personality and. I asked her, I asked her, um, she called it an IQ test. I asked her why we were doing it because that sort of thing isn't usually the most. And like, right? Yeah, what's it going to help you with right now? And and then she looks at me and she goes, I don't know. And then, no. like, walked away. Like, what is she trying? What is, what? Like could she she what project could she possibly be having us do that she has to hide the reason we're doing it from us? Hi, Daisy. Don't worry. I'm not replacing you with Vienna. Bella won't let me. Hi, I love you too. Don't, I haven't forgotten about you. You're still my number one love. You're a sweetheart. Hi. Parents always get so jealous whenever I pet other dogs. <laughs> I'm in the kitchen and I'll, lick pet, my skin off. and I'll pet another dog and she'll and she'll be oh, using yeah. her nose to get my hand away from the other dog <laughs> and uh, rub her face on my hand. She's so cute. Wait, she does this. I was talking about you and her a lot today, talking about um, talking about how having your own dog, like what a difference it is compared to Having a family dog that we all share, like Missy, mm -hmm. and how after you got Paris, you know, being able to have your own dog that always responded to you, that you can, you know, always lay claim to, that you don't share. Mm -hmm. um, how helpful it is to you. You never say something adorable. I know. No matter how such a good puppy covered you, dress. Oh, it's fine. Wait. Paris is only going to have one litter that we have a boy and a girl from her. Yeah. Even if we don't breed them. Yeah. We'll still have Rio in the. Mm -hmm. And we'll still have Paris in the. In our. In our genetic, genetic stuff. Rio. Wait, is it like a fisher in that No. Just likely? Yeah, I never know. She's a tiny cavalier. I know. And then look at Paris. Like, even her arm is pretty tiny, so is Daisy, but Daisy's still, there's a bigger one. You know what's weird? Yeah. She and Spike Bread, they're both big. That one's tiny right there. Talking about you, sweet girl. Looks so much like she did when she was a little baby. Yeah. Oh, Remy. Remy's being so friendly lately. I know. I think she's getting ready to go into heat too. She and Robin. Hi, Paris. May that hoodie is so pretty on you. That color. Thank you. Um, is there a chance that if I put a jar of pickles in the fridge, they might be pulled by a dinner time? Yeah. No, it works. Wow. 
I'm gonna go sit with your mama now. Hmm?
Aw, look at you sweet doggies. Let me get a picture of you guys. Inside, you don't need out of the door. Got to put Theodore out alone throughout 15 minutes, and then I put Cutie Pie out with her. Um, Cutie Pie came back to the door first. I don't think that she was doing it all. Oh, yeah. Back. <laughs> so we're about 10 minutes after that. And she came back like very purposefully, and I picked her up, and she was like heavier. Her belly was like the puppies after we bottle feed them, like syringe feed them. Like she went out there without toast and she hunted and ate. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Pandora. And it was, she, she went, it was when she went out there alone. I hope she was hunting mice. <laughs> I um, can't think of anything else. That yeah, and well, I just think she was, she was out there for about 45 minutes. Um, and I didn't see her at all the whole time. She was like, okay, so it's not like she was out in the dark, you know, poop. right? No, 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 no. She was like gone and being like very covert about her operation. <laughs> yeah. But she was really funny when she came back in. Um, Mona and Toast came back in, and it smelled a very cold tummy. Or she said very cold tummy again. And Mona felt she had something which is not very cold. Oh. So I think. That Oh, they went on a team. I know what they're on. They're on a team. The ground squirts. They are the little guys. Oh, the one that looked like mice? Yeah. Oh, they eat that. Yeah, they eat that. I know that stuff. I've been in this room. I heard, um, he said, I was like, uh, I don't have stuff. I need to test it. And then Mr. Room was like, uh, like, just, just set up and she, and she goes, uh, do you have Snapchat, Mr. Oldham? And he goes, um, he goes, yeah. And she goes, uh, and she yelled to the class, Snapchat. And, um, uh, then everybody started asking for his snap. And so he goes, he goes, yeah, it's illegal. It is. It is. Teacher, it's, it, it's, well, it's, yeah, I'm not saying it. Uh, it starts um, called front rising, basically. It's when you start socializing. Like in a prison, correction officers can't do that in minutes where it starts putting on a level playing field instead of authority. Right, I was, what I was saying earlier is you want to say that that's illegal. Right. Right. Yeah, and that's what I tried to bring up with that meeting. Mm -hmm. Not basic, it's simple, but it's a little slice of it. And so, just to wait for the Oh, I got milk. I got uh, dinner. Thank God. I put people in the fridge. I saw it earlier. Oh. Um, oh, oh, shoot. I got to grab this. I got to be happy things on sale. Um, they were basically uh, McRibs. Oh. The, like McRib sandwiches, like the whole sandwich bread. And wow. Everything. Yeah. And they're on sale for, I think, I can check. It's actually 10 bucks. I should say the live stream went really well. The dog was really calm. And I took Bella out to see the cats, and she got, I basically did a live stream. So when Bella got home, I took her to see the cats. Bella was crazy, but we were able to keep it. We opened my surface and stuff out a little bit. Um, it's gone, like the day is gone. So you see, and the dogs, the animals, all the good. 
Um, Spike's been kind of scratching at the door and stuff going on, but other than that, they're in the
Bradley. sent by your father to come get you. So she did what she was told. Okay to help out, help her parents without needing to be so rude about it. Got some sweeping done. I saw. I saw. I also found a new favorite sitting position. I don't know why I didn't discover this before, but using this as a backrest, oh, and then so, you can sit. Um, yeah, it's super comfy too. And then you can pet the dog over here, and you guys climb your lap. Very nice. Yeah. And today we talked about the difference between ESAs and therapy dogs, and um, why not? And take care of your dog. So, I know it's just kind of she got the colors I need. I was not sure she's probably got the better quality. Oh. I don't want to do awful toilet. No. No. Like, toilet seats, like these toilet seats, I don't want to do 
You need something in here?
And Myra really wants to mate with Macchiato again, by the way. Really wants to mate with him? Yeah, she's been all like lovey dovey and she's looking for her boyfriend to come take care of her. Oh, it's a... This is like one of the first times where we didn't have them together a whole lot after work. And everybody needs to pass because they're all muddy. Like, Mocha's got it all in, like, her nipular area. Ew. Yeah, Paris has got it everywhere. I, like, I could not believe what she was in bed with me last night. Not her belly. Wait, Paris? Paris, yeah. It's like all over Oh, and Missy had sticker burgers all over her. Oh, my like, God. Like, on her arms and everything. Yeah, so I got them out. I need pennies my sister every night. I got them the dog scissors. But, um... It's a good thing I caught them when I did because it looked like she had just gotten them in, like they hadn't even gotten all of her furry. They hadn't, they, had, they, they hadn't set. Yeah. So um, they were in spots, like they were already really close to her skin and were, were in a really short fur. And so I was really nervous cutting them out because I didn't want to cut her skin. But we got them out, and Ralph didn't have sticks in her fur. Her Paris had sticks in her fur. Like there was a full, like four and a half inch. I just pulled out of Paris's out of the fur. She's. I don't. Yeah. 
Bella, I brought her back in here because she wanted to come in here. Come on, Vienna. Sometimes Vienna needs to Mom, come in. Um, well, I'm just letting you know that sometimes Vienna likes to come and just have a break and play with her doggy friends, okay? Oh. Criminal justice and law enforcement is in related occupations to the one. See? The green is the granite. Yeah. He had the wrong color. Yeah. I don't understand why they chose this. Maybe it was the I think that they were trying to get a contrast with this. But there's but it just it's too dark, I think. Cause this is already covered out. I love the dog, but you love this one. Now we'll be two one of these ones. Oh, there's a paint in the off. I know. I got that. Yeah. 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 So, oh my gosh. So all the ones that have fallen off, they are uh there are screws that like were too long that he cut down. They cut them too short. He's such an idiot. Yeah. And I can't believe that he was actually working on other people's houses. Because you gotta assume that he was putting his best work into his own house. Yeah. Yeah, I have a yellow marker. I don't think so. I don't know what I'm saying. Yellow? Yeah. Are you up for my picture? Um, and don't hold me up once. Just one hot second. <laughs> she gets so fierce about those toys. She was trying out this Christmas toy and she loves this appointment with the progress. <laughs> So she's like, oh, does that feel good in the hands? What? <laughs> when you pull on that. What? Does it feel good in the hands? Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. All right, Bella. What? I've got a yellow marker for you, but you got to be careful with it because it's a lot of marker. Is it permanent? Dad, I'm getting kind of 
beans of Hey, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is not in, in here. Elizabeth is somewhere else, Dad. Hey, this is for you on track.
What? Just be joking. Come on, yeah. Is that mine? Huh? The best is that mine?
This is something I can finish tonight. Do we have Q-tips? What? Do we have Q-tips? Yes. Okay. It is, if I use oil pastels, then I need Q-tips. What are you doing? Are you, fixed, are you like changing the knob or something? Ooh. I like, hold on. That's going to be so nice instead of the painted ones. Oh, I like the feel of them so much better, too. Yeah, that's, like, that's you can cool. get a way better grip on them. That's uh, what Mom said, too. She saw them, and uh, there was another one that I was looking at, and it was like, Ooh. yeah, it was, uh, so the ones that I was, like, I was deciding between were these ones, these guys, or it's basically these ones, but in the polished silver. And then when Mom reminded me of that, I was like, oh my God, I think that she noticed that because it would have been just another big fat one like that. I like these. Yay. When I have a house, I need skinny ones with like a, you know, a yeah. this thingy. Smooth, uh, I like this board. too. It's so much better than these, where you have to do this, and, uh, like your rock climbing. Like, like this. Yeah. 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 We're gonna have a. We're gonna have a. Oh. Table for the trash. Oh. Oh. I'm so glad I grabbed one extra. Holy smokes! I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Grab, grab one extra. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, oh, but oh man, I'm so glad you pointed that out. Thank you so much. Uh, I kind of, I when I saw that, uh, I was, I was oh. oh, that's what I was doing now. What? Nothing, nothing. I'm just, uh, you can still do the trash can, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited for the trash can to have a handle or not or whatever it is. You should uh you should give it a handle, like you should put an extra hole in it so mm -hmm. that you can put a Well, because then handle. unfortunately with the way these are so we're gonna have a we have a hole and then this thing is basically a hole right in the middle of it. We can cover that up with plaster and then paint it. I did buy some spackle, but it's a drywall spackle, not wood spackle. We can we can make it a handle, and then next time we go out, we can well, the, get some drawer spackle or whatever it is, and some paint. Well, this is a uh, these are knobs. Ooh. So these are knobs. This is a pole. I know. What? I was talking about paint. I know, but you're talking about you're saying you can make it. You can make it a. What did you say? A handle? A handle, yeah. You said you need a handle. Technically, these are handles. Yeah. But, uh, I'd rather a handle than a knob on the trash can. I'm gonna need to do a knob for the time being because I'm gonna leave a hole gaping. gaping holes. But we've been looking at that hole the entire the entire time. We could we could just wait. A couple more weeks. No, no, not waiting any longer. Not waiting. You're just too eager to get that hole filled. Yeah, exactly. Eagerly looking to fill this hole. Yeah. I can tell. Oh, yeah. 
What a beauty. What a beauty. Yeah. Dad, I, these two are for me and Bradley on Valentine's Day. The panda is for Bradley. The um, angel is for me. Oh. Because Bradley loves Panda Express. That's because oh, Bradley loves Panda Express. Yep. That's funny, girl. That's too funny. Mm -hmm. So I always use the like, Abella. I need to make a, a Valentine's card for mom. You need to make a Valentine's Day card for mom, eh? Yep, yep. Oh, that looks so cool. You like those? Oh, they are old ones right here. Oh, they're heavy. I hate, I hate my old ones. You hate the old ones? Yeah. Oh my god, they're so, this looks so cool. You like that? You know why? Why? Because people can see your fingers. So my god. So but we got one of these, so, so we don't have to. Yeah, we don't, don't have, have to use have your to hands anymore. Yeah. yeah. Don't have to use your hands. Uh, Dad? Oh, baby. What is this? What is this? Why did you find three of these? Are these our old ones? Are these the old ones? Hold on, Bella. Oops. Those are the old ones, yeah. Well, this one's taller than this one. What's that? This one's taller than this one. Yeah, doing it right. Ready? Yeah, right. Uh, Where's the one? Yeah, right. All together.
I'll put those on. Ah. Are we gonna throw these away? Um, probably. Mmm, chef's kiss. Mwah. Can you give it a chef's kiss, Bella? Mwah. Mwah. Beautiful. Delicious. Yeah, we can, we can do this. So put two, put one on both hands and, and put them and I do this uh -huh. and they make noise. Mm. And so I can do the crab. Alright, she's coming over. There's another one. Yes! That is so. I like. I like. I like the ones like this. You like those ones? Why do you like I like ones? all the silvers. Like all the silvers. Did you buy 20? Uh, what? 32. 32? 32. 30. Oh, Bella. Sorry, Bella. Chicken pot pie. Why is it chicken pot pie? Because of pot pie. I didn't have this before. Yes, you have. You have had the pot pie. And you love it! Uh, no, 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 no. Bell some air One, two, open oh, my shoe. Three, four, one, one, one. Back to the back. Can we make the airplane? Maybe later, though. I'm kind of busy with this project right now. Wait, it's not airplane. It's a mummy thing. You're a mummy. You're a mummy. Make anything on money. Oh, money. That's called that's called origami, Bella. Oh, wow. Origami is the art of folding paper. What's folding? Folding paper. Folding the paper into shapes. Ooh. What? The art of folding paper into shapes. Man. Um. Hey. Dad, on my birthday. Birthday? Dad, don't cut one of these off. Got it? Got it. Because I'm getting turn seven in a couple of days. Got it? Got it. It's a window. 
to the window to the wild. No, look, it's spinning. That was a good air. Yeah. Yeah. So I can get more air. Easy, Bella. It'd be easy with that dog here. No. Oh. oh, did you catch it? What's the You get it in your face. You're crazy, dog. <laughs> 
Annabella. Stop.
What? Oh, yeah, there is one cat outside. Would you mind going out there calling for her? It's cutie pie.
I heard you, man. Yeah. Did I make myself a peanut butter sandwich or something? I've got Jackson right now, Bradley. I know. But you're gonna have to. If you want to make it, and then just wait for everyone else to eat. Oh, I was gonna. I was gonna do all the chocolate and the crust or something. No. I didn't mean exactly a top of the You can have a conventional peanut butter jelly sandwich, or if you want to do a cheese sandwich, or a ham and cheese sandwich. Cheese sandwich. You want a ham and cheese sandwich? What about bacon and cheese? You got bacon, but we don't have to cook it. We have to the microwave it. Oh, no. What do you think? Hmm. Whoa! That's so cool. Does it look good? Yeah. I love you.
Thank <laughs>
Because it's supposed to be a sunset. That's why there's different like colors like that. Looks good, man. Looks good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, in my sketchbook, I'm doing all the tests that I have to do on paper. I've been doing them on the back pages of the sketchbook. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Because I don't want to do it in the front. Because there's a hundred pages. We won't need that many. Unless I use them all for testing. I think you can tell here I got a little frustrated. Oh, oh. I'll take the stuff on the side. Ouch. I think right here you can tell I got a little frustrated. Just a little bit. No, Don.
Are you coming, Jala?
Dad, do you know how to say Chinese? Dad, do you know how to say hello in Chinese? Konnichiwa. Loosen itself up, you can actually tighten them up without them. Yep. Hey, I'm breaking these all. I wonder what would you say to Madsen if you got the chance to meet him? Hell, I'll say hello. Thanks all the projects, bro. I'll say hello. Oh, that's why the house was listed so cheaply, Dad. Oh, no, he, he knows he did a terrible job. Uh, I, don't think I would say hello to him. I think the reason why is that they haven't seen so long. May I would say so hello to him. Because they haven't had any bites. The entire time they had it was. Any bites? Oh, no. no. Um. They had a price which is high for the area. How? How? Uh, how expensive was it? Like, how much was it? Five dollars. Half a million dollars! That's how much they were asking. Initially, like, when they first listed it. Oh, what did they move it down to when we offered? I don't know, I'm not going to tell you over the internet. I'll tell you later, though. Oh. Okay. 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 I think Mom told me it was before. I'm not sure, though. I think she was telling me about the average price. Okay, do you believe in Kanto? Uh, do you believe in Kanto? Spike, hush! What is your deal? Oh my god, so so um, this dude, Andy, every time I go to Spanish and the teacher likes us at the um, high school, he, he yells, uh, he yells, um, Hola, muy bien. He goes, muy bien. Oh my gosh, it's that's like, from the oil pastel. It's like yellow brown. Yellow brown? He, he also have purple he, here. He doesn't pronounce it right. He like purposely Yo does it. To, he does it to mess with her, and she and she goes very good, and she responds to him, and he's just messing with her the entire time. Wow. What? Like uh. Or how hungry you? Last class. Uh, uh, like last class period, he goes. He went, Mucho Gusta. 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 Mucho Gusta.
What does that feature? And and she. Bradley. Oh my gosh, Chris looks all that up. Sarah, can me and you sit 
Hey Bradley, where are you going? Uh, yeah, that one's your bill, uh... Hey, 
I'm getting a soda. Okay. Have okay. one soda. Good. Soda. What do you think, mommy? Oh, <laughs> they like they do not stand out like the other ones did. But it, Why do you always 
gas for the night. Five days a week, you don't need it. It's more like five days a week, you get the birds. Okay. Now it's like a year. What I want to show you is that you don't have to be in your mind. You have to show you that. Yeah, I bet you Oh, there is that. Oh, there's a You could pass me! Oh, my God! It's like, um, it's like a Yeah, it's a, a, a guys, yeah, it's a white Yeah, it's a Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I would need somebody else to be here. put it, you put a harness on it. So, do you remember, um, at one place that you, you guys, Whoa! 
Stop doing so loud! Stop doing so loud! Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's torture. I know. I know. Nice going, Mom. I don't want it too loud. Thank you so much. I can actually hear my dog. I, I can hear you from the mic.
The scratch sticks to your right eye. Oh, I thought my little eyes were so stained. White. You didn't brush your teeth last night. The wall. No. The papers. No. The papers. No. And something on your break. Oh. My blanket. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I used to joke. Yeah, I used to stay with it. Here? No. You don't even yes, no. drop potatoes. No. You don't even drop potatoes. I I don't I don't
Remy's excited to start sleeping with you. Yeah, she's still waiting. Oh my god, we're getting forgetting. Why is the why is the thing blurry again all of a sudden? Oh, oh Bella, you left all the best parts. Oh. I love Remy. What did you get? What? Dad! Oh, uh, do this! Here's your thing! Right. Can you do a second one? What? Just, just parachute. What about it? You put the, put the parachute through the uh, yarn through the hole here and the parachute. Did you do it? I don't know do this. It's easy.
Dad, did you do it? Watch the video, girl. Dad, this is so fun to Carla, play. what are you doing? Don't do another one. No, this is, this is just one. Well, yeah, don't do any more. Why? Because these aren't for you guys. These are for Valentine's Day, baby. Oh, Mom said she didn't want to. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. We're not going to have enough. So we're just keeping it for toys for home. What? So you throw it in the air, and it goes down by itself. Got it? That's how it goes. But we still have more stuff. Honey. I am a gummy. I am going there. Why the hell is Lenny so good at this? Dad! Dad, did you get it? Uh-huh, hold on. The
Okay, that'll be useful. That's fair.
What's going on out in the Four Seasons room? Rio is humping Cutie Pie.
for you. What is it? What is my Hello, food? come here. Do you want your own package of Oreos? No. No. Shoot and boot. 
Where's Ruth and me? It's Paris and Harris. Those are running names. Where's right and Does right rhyme with anything? Fight. Fight. Right to fight. Right to fight. Fight to be right. All right. Glasses, rasses. Oh, sure. Glasses, rasses. Oh, my goodness. Does do those rise? Good job, man. All I need to do is do take glass. a tip and wipe yes, the rhymes. oil Ooh, pastel. That is really pretty. That is so um, pretty. Um, it doesn't really look like a sunset, but... Yeah, it does. It's well, like an artistic thing. Well, can I say something? Come on. Yes, you can tell me something. Come on, take this way. Glasses, glasses. Oh, oh. Come on. Glasses, glasses. Do, do those rise? Right? Glasses. Um, so we need to be able to replace the GL with something and have it go around. So glasses with passes. Like, How about glasses and glasses How about Harry Shoe? Harry. Is that right? Oh.
For my mistake, you can still see it, so try to get it a little longer. Where's your mistake? I think it looks great without. Um, but it would probably look good with birds too. The, I'm only hesitant because I'm hesitant to give you advice to switch it when um, you know when it looks really good now. Because I know that in the past when I've had like projects like that, I would think I would try to like fix it with something like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, after I do it, it ends up not as good as it was before. And I always hate like not always. But I had there were occasions where I regretted doing it, and so that's why I'm like hesitant to tell you, like, yeah, but it looks so good now. And I know that you're. I know it's just gonna drive me crazy. I know, I know. Oh, I'm sorry, doggy. You're all waiting for your ice cubes. Go get your ice cube, Daisy.
Come on, baby. Girl. Hi, Chloe. Love you. I'm listening to an audio. Oh. Mom, she said, um, I just said that this chain has to grab it.
Bradley, you got to turn the fan on, yeah. Um, it's so uncomfortable. I know it's saying it's not injured. Sometimes you've got a better doctor and a man.
Hey, Dad. Yeah. Did you see what Bella wore home from school today? What? Did you see what Bella wore home from school today? Oh, yay. Good job, Bella. All right. What's this about? I take her, put her outside so you go potty. Uh, Bella took her up there. Oh, I told her. I always tell her to come let me know when she's grabbing her. She let me know. Oh. And uh, uh, a couple minutes later, I was like, oh, crap. Go. Thank <laughs> you. 
No. Stop.
Oh God, Jesus.
Hey everyone.